Uh, I'd like to call this meeting to order of the golf committee. Uh, let's please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have a quorum. We have one excused member. Lisa had another appointment and is excused for today. Otherwise, the rest are here. Are there any additions or corrections to the minutes from the February meeting? Nope. Seeing none, they'll be approved. Okay, we'll go right into golf operations. Pat? All right, good afternoon, everyone. Just uh, have a few slides here to recap the last 30 days or so of activity in golf ops. Uh, up on the screen, you're seeing our 2022-23 schedule. I am constantly amazed how far we're into this schedule. Uh, we just completed our men's match play round robin event, and uh, the uh, Sun City West Classic is uh, this next upcoming weekend, which will be the 25th and 26th of March. We have that sold out, and then you can see that uh, our next event through Golf Ops will be May 6th, so time keeps on ticking. Um, oop. Here we go. A uh, quick uh, overview of the uh, match play final results. Good turnout. This is a tournament that's been very popular in the past. We have uh, held it in December. We moved it uh, later into the year and expanded the field. It was 72 prior to this year. We added two more flights to make it 96. Had no problem filling this out. You might see some, uh, recognize some names up there. Um, it's, a, it's a really fun uh, match play event where you play each team in your flight. So each flight is made up of six teams and it's a point system and you can see the winners as well as the special event winners. Again, didn't give out a hole-in-one prize, but we're still hoping. A few pictures of some of the players. They're all smiling because they either had too much beer or they won some money, one of the two. Um, our next event, as I mentioned, is the Sun City West Classic. It's a two-person team. We have men and women flights in this. Uh, first round at Trail Ridge will be a best ball. Second round will be a scramble at Grandview. So this will kind of uh, close our, our uh, peak season or our, our winter series. Couple events I wanted everybody to be aware of. Uh, this last weekend, we hosted the Knights of Columbus at Deer Valley. Uh, that was sponsored by one of our residents. Uh, turned out to be a really good event. Four Paws Rescue at Grandview was held Sunday. Uh, their event wasn't as big as we had hoped, but typically when you uh, host one for the first year, uh, it takes a, a year or two to grow it. So uh, that's been good. It was supported well by our residents. And then uh, next Monday, we have the Kansas City Royals baseball coaching staff come out and play in an afternoon shotgun. We've been doing that the last two or three years, and that's been a nice event. Uh, in April, we have the Auto Restoration Club. Uh, they've moved from Echo Mesa and expanded their tournament to take up at a regulation course, and that'll be hosted at Deer Valley with food afterwards. Tin Cup is the uh, softball club's fundraiser or event. Uh, typically, this has been hosted at two golf courses in the past. This year, they consolidated it, and they'll be just hosting it at Deer Valley. Natterberg School District, I just uh, got word that this might be on hold and pushed back. Uh, they've got a conflict in their schedule, but that's still on our uh, planning schedule for right now. And then we have the Big Ten Tournament, which is a, a tournament that uh, ties in uh, uh, residents who support uh, Big Ten colleges. So 
We're excited about that one, and that's going to be at Deer Valley as well. Just want to remind everybody that if, if you're not receiving uh, communication through the Golf Ops, please reach out to either myself or Paul Gruza in Golf Ops, and we can add you to our database. Uh, things as tournaments, specials, um, green team, there's a, lessons. There's a lot of things that we try to communicate. In fact, uh, we try to communicate some of the tournaments that we we host. We don't do that for tournaments outside our community, but we do it for those that are being uh, held at one of our golf courses uh, in attempts to help them increase their sign-up. Call Center has been busy this uh, month, as in other months, and I just wanted to update you on that. Uh, in February, they had 8,400-plus calls, uh, averaging 302 calls per day. So this has been a, a good thing for us, adding Saturday and Sunday. Uh, it frees up the starter and gets them to be uh, more engaging and more efficient at the counter with green fees and sales. Wanted to update this as well. Green team numbers. February we had 371 rounds played by green team members. You can see the running total of 1203 for the four months. These are new golfers, people that are either re coming back to the game after a long uh, hiatus due to career and family, um, or they are starting out scratch. So we're trying to get to those 2022 numbers, and I'll keep you posted on that. Just a uh, quick reminder, and I know this I'm beating my drum on this, but I really believe the quality of our golf courses uh, really live and die with our residents and the rules. Uh, and one of the big ones that I'm pushing is the uh, 90 degree cart path rule as best we can, especially as we get through uh, the winter months, overseeding, um, just trying to get through transition and give Todd a chance to grow some grass out there. Here you'll see a recent example of some of the pictures that we get from my PAs. And I received this the other day. You can see actually two carts in this picture. Uh, one there, medical flag, would be 15 feet from the edge of that green. Uh, on the other cart, you can see the nose. It's in a equally uh, close position. And um, we reached out to these folks and explained the uh, rules, sent them a medical flag agreement, and said, Please remember that uh, failure to comply could cause you to lose your privileges of being 15 feet from the green. So really just asking everybody to stress amongst your own groups that if you see this, that uh, you know all of us need to be the ones that set the example and just try to get that behavior uh, corrected. Now, I also know there's mobility issues, but sometimes cart paths are closer to the green than being out in these areas. So... Just trying to be smart with this. Um, some of you might have experienced this last month. We had some challenges with our uh, portal. Uh, you were maybe trying to create a uh, lottery request and you saw public. It didn't let you into the lottery. Uh, we were fighting that for about a week, seven, eight days. Uh, totally, our software provider found the problem and corrected it. So apologize for any challenges there, but it is corrected. Dave Aaron continues to have special events over at the Golf Lab, and uh, the most recent one was the Ping Shrixon Club Fitting. And that's all I have. Thank you. Are there any questions for Pat? Uh, yes, Gary? Can you give us an update on the ball machine? On the range, range ball machines? Sure, sure. So uh, the question was update on our, on our new range ball dispensers. Uh, we're scheduled to uh, receive those in uh, May or June. I wanted to get through busy se season so that we didn't have this transition. But we'll convert all the existing keys that people have to the new format, which will be similar to a gift card or a, a debit card. It'll be a special card. They're cheaper to replace and cheaper for us to, to buy. Uh, the new technology that we are going to have available to us is that we're going to tag that card. If you buy one of the cards at a reduced price, I'll be able to tag it with your name, Gary, 
and uh, it's good at all seven locations. And um, as, as you use it, that total will be in real time. I can see what value you have on it. One of our challenges with all the keys was we had to treat it like cash. And if you lost it, you were out of luck uh, because I couldn't replace it because that key's floating around somewhere and I would be having those balls being used as well as your balls being used. So we treated it like cash. And now if you happen to lose one, I can go to your account, see what the value is, know that it's yours, cancel that one, and then issue you a new one. So we're looking for delivery, like I said, May and June, and we'll have all seven of them. And uh, we're excited about it. Tom? Pat, uh, on the, uh, when the lottery system went down, uh, I hate to keep stressing this, but we need to tell people. I mean, you've got your golf email base and things like that. Right. Last meeting, nothing was said about it. I got home and had a phone call. Why, why can't I get in the lottery? What's going on? I don't know anything about it. And, I mean, you know, it could have sent an email out and told them, hey, we're having an issue. You can get in the lottery by calling or somehow like that. Or, but to communicate about it and let people know. Okay, I appreciate that. It wasn't global. It was hit and miss. Not everybody experienced this. And it was on, a, uh, on kind of a daily basis. So, yes, we can get better at that. Uh, we didn't know how big it was. Did anybody besides Tom, were you involved in any of that? Patty? Okay, Patty was. Anybody? Donna? Marilyn? Okay. So it was, um, it was interesting how and why it happened, but we didn't realize how big it was, and I, I think today we still don't know how big it was, but point well taken. Absolutely. Thank you. Any other questions from the committee? Dennis? Pat, I was wondering if there are signs on the fairways more than 30 feet from the greens pointing the uh, carts to the cart paths? There are, and it varies from course to course. Um, in fact, some of them, and, and if you kept it at 30 feet, you'd have a wear pattern there. So Todd's challenge is to keep them out of the golfer's way, but also to a, a move them back and forth so that you don't create additional wear patterns. But uh, I, I remember a conversation a couple weeks ago where um, a golfer came in and was upset at us because uh, – the golfer kept hitting those signs with their ball <laughs> and would like to have them removed. <laughs> so we're trying to play both sides of the fence there. <laughs> so yes, there are signs, um, but they do vary in 30 feet from day to day. Tell them to aim for the signs, they'll never hit it. <laughs> I said, that's pretty impressive. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions from the committee? Bill? Um, so I thought this is as good a time as any to ask a question. Uh, customer basically was inquiring relative to all the range balls that we do sell and the dispensing machines on the three golf courses that Nibby manages, those ball machines and dispensers still remain on the patios. Yes. Is the plan when these new machines come in to relocate those off of the patio to make it a little more peaceful? <laughs> So, um, good question, Mr. <laughs> and I'm, I'm going to probably end up directing it back towards you. But uh, for those of you that have been in the community for a while, um, they can remember when Grandview and Pebble Brook were near the patios or close to the patios. And uh, the first one we moved was Grandview uh, because we put power on the range, and we did that uh, in part for the, uh, if, if you remember the LPGA Legends Tour, they had some needs and we put power out on the driving range. Uh, that power was also used for a drive-in movie one December, if you remember that. So uh, then we were going through a remodel, um, fixing the Pebble Brook parking lot and with golf ops being there, we thought it saw an opportunity to move that one because it went from the patio to the outbuilding over there where the uh, uh, cell tower was. We had it over there for a while, and we felt that on the range it would be better served, so we moved it there. 
and added power. So long story to tell you that it costs, back then, I believe we paid 10, paid ten to $12,000 for power to be put out on the driving range. That is what's gonna be required at the other golf courses too. So we're trying to tie it in with major parking lot construction, money in the budget, things of that nature. Um, it is a little disruptive um, on the patio, but I think you're too far away from the uh, where they sell beer, so you need to move closer to the beer stand for those that have problems with that. <coughs> Any other questions from the audience? Thank you, Pat. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, next, we have Todd Patty. Good afternoon. Uh, just a couple updates today. Um, first one is our spring verification, which is coming up next month. And I have the dates listed here, starting with Pebble Brook on, on the 13th. These are five-day closures. We close on a Thursday and then reopen on, on Tuesday. And if you notice that uh, Grandview and Desert Trails are not on that list, that's because we're closed on those golf courses with the project at Grandview. And then our normal closure for projects over at uh, small in-house projects over at uh, Desert Trail. So we'll do some verification during the summer on those courses so they won't be left out. Uh, this verification will involve pulling a half inch core. So it's gonna take a plug and then uh, the sand top dressing. So the greens are gonna be a little bit slow and bumpy uh, for a few days, I, and, uh, but I think they'll be very playable. But this, you know, this verification this time of the year is so beneficial for, for the greens. They, you know, they're hard. We've, uh, this winter it's been cold and wet, so they are very compacted. So this is really gonna be a benefit for that. And then also going into transition, um, you know, you actually can warm the soil temperatures just a little bit by uh, air fine and putting that sand top dressing on them. So that's kind of a kickstart to our, our, uh, our transition and getting the Bermuda to, to fill in on those greens. All right, and then the big one is the Grandview uh, Irrigation and Turf Reduction Project. Um, the mainline connection has been installed, and the road crossing installation is scheduled for next week. We're just waiting for a few things, but uh, as of right now, that's scheduled for next week. Uh, sprinkler heads, valves, valve boxes, and the swivel joints have been delivered and are on site. And I'd like to note that we're gonna keep all of those. So all those old, old heads that come out and a lot of the valves, we can reuse those. We'll put those over on the other golf courses because it's all rainbird, so we can reuse those heads so they're not gonna get thrown away. So we'll make good use out of those. Uh, all the irrigation pipe has been delivered and distributed throughout the golf course. In fact, we have pipe on 17 of the 18 holes. And so far, we've uh, fused about 40% of the pipe and they continue to do that every day. You'll see them over there behind 17. They have the fusing machine out there and that's what they're doing. They're fusing the main lines together. <clears throat> In fact, in the pictures here, you can see, you've seen this picture before, the coils of the two-inch lateral, which will go to, from the main line out to the, out to the irrigation heads, the gate valves in various sizes for main line, and then this is the fusing machine here. Talked about the uh, connection coming out of the, uh, the main line connect, connection coming out of the pump station. You can see that here. This is what I consider the main artery because this is gonna fit into this section here and then this is gonna go across the road or under the road on 17 and then it's gonna go over to 18 and that's what's gonna feed the entire golf course water supply wise. And then just a couple pictures, you can see how flexible this pipe is. That's that 18 inch main line. Those are 50 foot sections over there on the left hand side. And when they picked them up, you can see how those bend. And then this is one that they've already fused together. It's over on the right-hand side of number 13, and you can see where they bend it around there. So as they're putting that mainline pipe in, if there's a tree or anything in the way, they can just bend that right around. So if you had like 300 yards of that pipe, they could probably, they could probably twist that into a figure eight if they needed to. That's how flexible that is. All right, and then just, uh, just a little information on the high, uh, high density polyurethane pipe. It is corrosion resistance, which is good because we put a lot of uh, fertilizer through our lines, so that, that's a plus there. High pressure resistance. Uh, leak free joints, that's the big one there where they fuse those, those are not gonna leak. You know, right now with our PVC pipe, all of our leaks are at the glue joints, so there's no glue, but that's where we're having the problems on the PVC pipe. 
eco-friendly, 25-year warranty on this, and the big one is extended lifespan of 100 years. So uh, I don't think any of us will be around to see that, yeah. <laughs> that replacement, so. And again, the timeline right now, everything's still on track. Uh, nothing has really changed. Uh, some important dates, uh, Monday, April 3rd is when we close the back nine. Front nine will be open along with the golf lab and Crooked Putter. Uh, and then we close everything down on May 29th and then uh, reopen the golf course. Um, our plan right now is to open the golf course on October 24th after the fall winter season. So nothing has changed. Everything seems to be on track at this point. So. And that concludes my report. If you have any questions. Yeah, the, the road construction that's going on along 18, does that have anything to do with the golf course, or is that that wired? No, you know what they're doing? They're, they're widening the, uh, the uh, sidewalk over there, and that's a county project over there. Yeah, that has nothing to do with the irrigation project, but it, uh, it seems awful busy over there. I know I was over there on 17 the other day, and I don't know how many people and trucks were all over the place, but you know, that's mostly county that's doing the widening of the, of the sidewalk. Well, Todd, it, it ties into yours, but it's probably more to Pat. When uh, next week, when Grandview goes down to nine, uh, are you going to book just nine hole tee times, or are you going to take uh, nine, replay the nine, and block out times? Yeah. So it's 18. Um, the plan is to set up a tee sheet, uh, which would be like a double tee start kind of, but you're doing it single tee. So we would have two hours of tee times and then block it, assuming everybody's gonna to wanna to play 18, and then block it for, for two hours and then open it back up. And if they just play nine, uh, opportunity for us to maybe put somebody else in there, but we'll uh, go off the first tee and make room for 18 holes, yes. And there'll be a ring on the tee sheet or online that'll, that'll be blocked out that way. Right, you wouldn't be able to book a time in the middle of the turns. Okay. Correct. Gary? So in May, when the uh, putting green is closed, where are you going to move the lady putters and men putters? Do you uh, know yet? I uh, haven't heard. I had an uh, email conversation with the lady putters. They were asking where the men are going to move, and they might go to the same place just because of uh, their storage of uh, their flags and things like that. But typically, they'll either use uh, uh, Echo Mesa is their number one go-to, but now Pebble Brook with the big green, they'll use that, and I haven't heard a final. So do you decide that, or do the... Do I, they, they weigh in, okay. and then I can tell them the pluses and minuses for okay. going. But usually it's Echo, and then they'll try and use us. Okay. Any other questions from the committee? Any from the audience? Thank you, Todd. Okay, next is Mr. Quip standing in the back for his back purposes. Thank you, Harry. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My stuff isn't as exciting as pipe, but <laughs> you know, we'll try to make it as exciting as possible. I think the pipe stole the show, unfortunately. <laughs> Okay, so I uh, just want to get through the January year-to-date financials, and then by the next meeting, we'll be able to present uh, February, and then uh, get right into uh, the next item on the agenda, the budget update. So let's get started. So for uh, January actual year-to-date compared to budget, uh, for, on the revenue side for golf, we are ahead, fortunately, favorable of 117000 uh, in total. January was a little rough because of all the closures and frost delays that we had. Uh, it, unfortunately, we lost a little bit of ground there, but uh, plan on making that up. I think February was about even with budget, so hopefully in uh, March and April we'll make that up. Looking at the rounds, uh, 1,471 less than budget, about 1% off of budget on rounds, again, because of those delays and um, closures due to weather. And then uh, on the golf fees per round, we're tracking at 1% uh, 1, 1 over budget. Looking at the summary of expenses through January, 
were 162 unfavorable, um, hit with some uh, that 34% health insurance increase, unfortunately, uh, is driving the wages and benefits. Uh, we've also added, um, Pat talked a little earlier about the call center, and uh, we did some wage, wage adjustments for our starters as well uh, to get them on par for what they were, uh, the services that they were providing. But um, so running uh, unfavorable to budget in wages and benefits, and then on the supplies and equipment side, and talking with Todd and landscape maintenance, uh, well, first of all, supplies and equipment, that's seed. Uh, we knew that was going to come in heavier than what we had budgeted, unfortunately. But um, we feel like we can make up the make up some ground here in the next five months to offset some of this uh, unfavorable variance. In total, running 45,000 unfavorable to budget and the operating cash uh, outflow. Looking at prior year, uh, we're uh, 588 unfavorable to prior year. Some of the notables there are we are down, compared to prior year, 7,400 rounds of golf compared to prior year. Some of that's due to the weather related, and some of that's just simply last year was a, a better year for us for rounds, and uh, we're not uh, hitting those rounds so far to date this year. And then looking at the golf fees per round, that roughly 8% increase, which was which makes sense because of the uh, budget increase that ties in with what we figured it would be in the budget. On the revenue side, looking at uh, the golf cards, uh, golf cards uh, continued to perform very well, and the increases in these areas are due to golf card sales. It's driving the the, the round average price down a little bit, but this uh, helps us. This this will impact us as we go through the year. Uh, a steady increase in in these areas for the golf uh, golf card revenue, and then the the you'll see that the resident or the member rate is down seventy two thousand. Guest is up one hundred and four, and you'll see those golf card uh, rounds increase as well. And then the out, it's really the, the, the non-member is the guest and the outside play, those combined. Uh, we're going to see a little change in that area because of now. Now we're identifying better the actual outside play because there's a sales tax um, implication there. So before it really wasn't very important because those, those prices are the same for member guest and outside play. But now that sales tax is tied to the outside play, we're getting better actual outside play versus member guest uh, identification. So looking at the summary of expenses, 712,000 over last year. Some of the notable things there are the wages of 354,000 due to those increases that we budgeted for and the health insurance uh, increase as well as seed and the supplies is the uh, oil and gas mainly. So that's the January financial. Um, one thing, could you send us a copy? Because we didn't have a discussion of the December numbers. Could you forward us a copy? Uh, absolutely. Yeah, we can do that. And, you know, uh, and I'll get them to the other members or if you want to just send one to each member. Okay, I can do that. Okay. Um, there's a couple things that has been brought up. Um, one thing is, just like you said, we were down 80, 84,000 in outside play. And with the aspect of potentially passing on credit card fees, so just so you know, I am in favor of passing those fees on. But I think one of the things that we need to have some discussion on is you take that fee, which is now $68, 
you put a credit card fee on it of a buck eighty, the tax of four twenty eight is up to seventy four oh eight. Then you add an eighteen dollar cart fee on it, you're now up to ninety two dollars. Yeah. Um, are we getting into that world where we're going? We might be stepping into it because of it's going up too dramatically, and we're not going to get the outside play. And that'd be between you and Pat. I mean. Yes. Yeah. No, that's a that's a great point. Um, you know, we looked at the rates for the surrounding communities, and you know, the not just the communities, but the golf courses in the surrounding area. Uh, you know, we feel like we're on the market for the pricing, but yes, that is another hurdle that we'll now have to, um, you know, go over with the outside play because they'll start factoring that in. Um, certainly up for discussion. I, I put uh, part of my budget presentation is to talk about the credit card fee. So I put that in here because I know um, I, we'd like to hear from this committee on that. So absolutely. Uh, do you have more? Or uh, do for, we want to open it up for questions? Uh, for, for January, we can open up for questions, but I have a whole separate budget presentation here that I'd like to go through. Okay. For, for And then once we go through that, maybe budget-related questions? Okay. Okay. All right. So that being said, uh, I just wanted to sh uh, flash up the uh, – uh, give a budget update to this committee and talk about, you know, some of the challenges that we have uh, on uh, both sides of the ledger. And, and just kind of talk about, you know, what the budget looks like and what our thought process is. So here we go. So overall, uh, we're projecting this year uh, to come in at uh, one point, roughly uh, 1.25 million. And we're budgeting next year to come in at 944,000, unfavorable, uh, for a 25% um, decrease in unfavorable or 25% favorable. Um, there's some key movers within that 23-24 budget that we'll talk about. Uh, that it, that's what's driving the the huge variance, and we'll talk about that. And it's related to credit card fees. So some of the budget ex assumptions on the uh, expenses side, we've got some uh, mandated wage adjustments, minimum wage, and uh, you know, driving up the. Uh, salary wages and benefits. Uh, we've also filled some positions in the landscape maintenance area that we'll talk about, which are, are, have been, it's actually been nice. We, we got that number going in the opposite direction. Uh, we're not exactly where we want to be there, but we are in better shape than we have been the past year or two in that department. And also, again, on the wages and benefits is our health insurance premium increases. Last year we had a 34% increase. Uh, we, don't, we don't know, we don't have enough history on the claims history because our, our premiums come in uh, right around November, December range for the following year. So we're gonna budget 15% and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll start there. And if we see anything that's causing us a need to adjust that, we will. And then overall, 5% increase uh, applied before um, any specific adjustments to our expense structure. Uh, you know, inflation continues to hold steady, and and uh, you know we need to account for that. So that's part of the uh, budget assumptions. And then we'll talk about credit card fees. Uh, on the revenue side, we're we are putting in some uh, rate increases, and you're well aware of that, and we'll talk about that. And then we're going to budget, uh, currently we've budgeted 326,000 golf rounds. So we got to that number uh, by taking our actual rounds July through January and adding to that last year, February through June. That's how we got to the, to the 326,000 round count. So essentially, it's actual rounds. Okay, so and and as we move through the year and that round count continues to adjust, if it's in a material manner, we may need to take a look at these rounds and uh, adjust them accordingly. Okay, but right now we've taken July through January actual and then added to that February through June of last year to come up to that round count. In 2021, 
we hit 326,000 rounds coming out of COVID. And then in 22 last year, uh, someone once said we were, we were drunk on golf rounds last year. Uh, so 333,000 rounds last year, it's a good year. Okay, so if we look at uh, the golf division and we look at the expense category for golf division, you can see uh, an overall 8% increase in wages and benefits due to those things we talked about earlier. And then the categories down the line, what we're looking at in terms of increases or decreases in each category. So wages and benefits, 64% of the overall expense structure for golf is attributable to wages and benefits. So we have seven golf courses with 16 departments. So each of the seven courses have a operations and maintenance department. So that is 14 other, and then each, uh, and then we have an basically administrative and a um, administrative maintenance account. Uh, so that equals the 16 uh, departments. And within those departments, we have 25 unique positions, 233 employees, 99 full-time, 138 part-time for a total of 264,000 hours worked annually in golf. So if you look at golf maintenance and golf ops, golf maintenance makes up 63% of those hours and golf ops makes up 37%. Can you tell me what's a unique position? So a unique position is a starter is a unique position. A greenskeeper is a unique position. So just the different types of positions. And then there may be, you know, you've got multiple starters in those positions, multiple landscapers. So a unique position is just a job position that we have multiple people in. So what are some of the labor challenges we're facing that we have to deal with that aren't necessarily in our control? Well, labor shortages, you know, we have competition in the market. There's a lot of golf courses in the area. Um, and then these affect certain positions more than others, of course. But, uh, you know, that minimum wage increase uh, causes compression issues within those positions. Uh, and so, you know, and then just overall, you know, we've, on the insurance side, you know, we have a workforce demographics that isn't uh, necessarily conducive to low insurance premiums. So um, that causes us challenges as well. So that 8% overall increase, uh, 614,000 in wages and benefits, and that's uh, because, of, because we're budgeting a 3.5% uh, merit raise increase to help us uh, address the challenges to the compression that we talked about earlier, as well as uh, there are some competitive um, job positions that we need to take a look at and, um, you know, do some increases in those areas. And then the overall merit increase. And then there's a minimum wage. We're estimating that to be a dollar per hour. Last year it was a dollar five. We don't know what that rate is until late fall, very late fall. So, um, Last year was a dollar five. It's usually it's tied to CPI, so we're going to budget a dollar in that uh, for a minimum wage increase, uh, and then we'll adjust accordingly. And then again, health insurance premiums, you know, they keep going up. If we look at the employees, we we take our employees and we associate them to something called a full time equivalent or an FTE. So an FTE is basically. 40 hours worth of work. It can come from one person or it can come from three or four people. So we take all of the positions and all of the employees in those positions, add all their hours together, divide it by a full 40 hour work week and that gives us our FTEs, okay? So from uh, 2015, we had 149 FTEs in golf. Uh, through COVID, we, we dropped to 126. Uh, this year, we budgeted 128, and in fiscal year 24, we've got 134 FTEs in this budget. Okay, uh, along the ex uh, expenses, we also have uh, non-payroll related operating expenses, and the challenges in those areas that we deal with. Uh, we've got, you know, some of those inflationary and supply chain pressures that we feel that are that have hit golf and the service industry really hard. 
I mean, it's, you know, if the, if the normal CPI is 6.4 or 6.2, uh, you know, you could probably add three to 4% on top of that in this industry. So uh, we're, we're, we're feeling it. And, and so we have to budget for that. And then on the, the bank fees, you know, the, we're gonna talk a little bit more about bank fees later, but as our revenue grows, we pay bank fees on every transaction. So if that transaction increases, so do our bank fees. Uh, and then the effective outside events on petroleum-based products, you know, fertilizers and fuel, a huge part of what happens in golf. So we're being affected by that. So, you know, we we spent a lot of time putting this uh, this this budget together, not just looking at payroll, but also looking at these expense categories. And Todd and Pat, uh, you know, they came to the table, and we really sharpened the pencil, and were able to 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 in in spite of increasing a, uh, doing a five percent across the board increase on the non payroll expenses, we were able to reduce in these certain areas. So in landscape maintenance, for example, and repairs and maintenance, we were able to cut forty three thousand out of the budget uh, and drop that down to about a three percent increase when you factor out specific items that we have to do that we didn't do last year. And then on the energy uh, efficiency side, we continue to see energy efficiencies with all the lighting projects and uh, well pumps and uh, AC units that we've updated over time here. They're creating energy savings for us, so we're getting a return there. And then the recent uh, well pumps, as well as this, the sprinklers uh, that are being installed, uh, we're able to save uh, in these expense categories as well. So. I just want to. I like to put this in there to let everybody know this isn't just you know. Hey, what are you know? What are we doing? What are we doing this year? Let's budget that for next year without looking at these areas. And we have, and um, this is real money. So, so taking a look at credit card fees uh, for last year, fiscal year 22, golf had 8.2 million in credit card sales, uh, roughly 230 thousand credit card swipes transactions. And, and the total credit card fees associated with golf and in in that $8.2 million in sales was $222,000 in credit card fees for a roughly 2.71% rate. <clears throat> so if, if the, there was a recommendation from the Budget and Finance Committee to pass credit card fees on to the payer, Okay, so if we did that, that would have roughly 197,000 positive impact in golf. Okay, so it'd be cost avoidance or, or passing on of cost. All right, we figure people will continue to use credit cards, but if we charge that fee to the payer, it's, it's a pass through. All right, so the, the assumption is that, again, members will continue to use credit cards, the fees will be passed on to the payer, and we, we, we estimate that there, for golf, there would be roughly 30,000 in bank fees and operating costs associated with taking those other payment types because, I mean, there's a benefit to taking credit card transactions. We get our money faster. We're not counting cash. We're not balancing checks. Uh, we're not chasing bad checks. So there will be a cost associated with this, um, and it's kind of a, a guesstimate right now, but we, we put 30,000 in the budget for that. So uh, looking on the, at the revenue side, um, good story here, you know, we're, we're budgeting uh, an 8.6% and, and increase in revenue, and we'll talk about where that increase is coming from. So when we look at the greens fees, as you know, we, we talked about a, um, you know, kind of the, the directive we received from governing board and uh, budget and finance was to, hey, how can we increase fees and impact our members the least? And how do we want to make sure we're on the market for the services that we provide to the public that come here and use our facilities? So in looking at those golf fees, comparing to surrounding uh, golf courses, we put in the budget an increase for the non-member uh, golfers. And that increase is going to be, is budgeted for the, the peak season and transition season. So uh, October through May. 
and it will be a $7 for prime time, $4 for twilight, and $2 increase for super twilight for the non-member golfers. And then we're not implementing anything during the, the, the off-peak season, June through uh, September. And then for the members, a dollar increase in that same time period during the peak and transition uh, seasons across the board. And those two uh, items will generate 688000 in additional golf revenue. Uh, we've also we have also proposed a, a golf cart increase for those cards that aren't impacted by the other increases, and that will generate twenty one thousand, and then sixty six thousand in food and beverage for a, uh, a dollar increase for a pitcher of beer and fifty cent increase for a can of beer. This is I mean the cost of beer is just it's just gone up, and we need to adjust our prices accordingly. And then on the driving range. Um, you know, we've got all these different levers we can pull, not just in golf, just in the community in general. So uh, we're trying to tap as many of those resources as we can to help cover the expenses that I talked about earlier. So a $1 increase in a small bucket and a $2 in a large bucket with the range key price staying the same will generate 76000 So um, there is a change on the capital budget. So we were just talking operating. Okay, so the capital budget is the non-operating expense items that we pay for, the things that are put on the books and depreciated. So in the budget, we had three, I'm sorry, two paving projects, and um, I've attached the capital to this, um, the capital budget to this presentation uh, behind the, the packet that you have. But in these two paving projects, we are seeing uh, an increase in the cost of, of those two paving projects of total 21,000. So just wanted to update everybody with that because you pushed that recommendation up to the board already. Just wanted to give you an update on that. All right, Harry. Okay, we'll open it up for questions from the committee. Um, start with Gary. Marilyn. Donna. I'll go back. Sorry. Oh, okay. Uh, Sorry, one no. question I had with uh, health insurance: a lot of the employees are from the community. They don't receive health insurance, do they? Since that's, most of them are on Medicare. That's true. <laughs> yes, that's correct. So that's true. Okay. yes, yes. Okay. And then on the breakdown um, for credit card sales, that's just rounds of golf, not merchandise in the pro shops? It's all, it's everything. everything. So golf and everything else, food and beverage and merchandise. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Uh, I um, will, uh, sorry, uh, on the golf cards, those are purchased in membership, so that is not in that number. Oh, and do debit cards get affected since it's? Yes. They're still a charge, okay. Yes. All right. I see Bill coming forward. Comments, Bill? No problem. We're still doing research on the credit card scenario and what we can do to save money and everything else associated with compiling this budget to come up with something that the governing board by the end of May hopefully can can approve. So we're out in front of committees and and golf players and anybody we can talk to to get kind of a feel for what's up, what's going on. What can we do? Um, there are about six other communities that we kind of meet with periodically on the Grands One and, and Sun City Festival, Pebble Creek, uh, Westbrook Village, Green Valley down south of Tucson, and kind of similar organizations to what we've got going on. And when it comes to credit card fees, everybody's facing it. Um, originally, we were thinking, you know, golf, uh, one, of the, one of the charts I think you, you probably have seen in the past where the actual number of swipes being taken at our golf courses. They're sizable, right? There's a couple hundred thousand, 230 transactions over the course of a season. And I, and I thought, you know, this credit card fee that the bank is charging is per swipe, and it's not. Um, so it really has to do with the volume of revenue that we're bringing in. And so talking with some other constituents out there, what are they doing? And most most of the folks, and I've gotten response of the six communities I mentioned, I got responses back from four of them, I'm still waiting for the others. But um, a lot of the companies there, they don't even deal with cash anymore. 
they don't, and one, the grant doesn't take it other than their restaurant. They don't, they don't want to be bothered with it. So it's a credit card only thing. So they're forcing your hand to use these cards, hence the fees that are there. Um, but they absorb them. And we have over the last five years been doing that as well. You know, a couple of years ago, five years ago, our bank fees were like 300 grand. Now they're close to six as our volume has increased. We've had our foot on the gas pedal, though. We've been pushing that with portals and, and all of the things that we do in membership and golf. And, you know, because, you know, and it's, it's the way of the world. It's what people do these days. Go to an NFL game, go to the Phoenix Open. They don't take cash, right? It's all credit card. So um, what can we do to kind of enhance the program? Um, you can put money on your, on your owner member cards. Um, you can pay by check. But the, the organizations that we've been talking to, um, they basically absorb the day-to-day -day spending on credit cards, but they really, they're, they're charging a 3% by average, three and a half um, membership only. So when you come and pay your annual dues, um, that's where it's collected. And the day-to-day -day stuff, not so much. So there are options out there. We can talk about golf rates. We can talk about, you know, personally, I feel with the, with the $10 million that golf is generating, like, you know, the golf members here within the community, I think, are carrying their weight when it comes to um, the cost of operation, right? There's, a, there's subsidy involved in everything we do. We can talk about how much we subsidize swimming pools and those types of things when it comes to recreation centers. It's huge. We, we show that in all of our budget presentations. You know, where does the money come from? Membership in golf. So when we're after money, we're trying to pull levers. You know, how do we balance a budget? You know, where, where, we're, where are we looking? Membership in golf. And so, you know, hopefully you as the, as the committee can kind of help us make a recommendation forward to the, to the governing board to see, you know, you're the users. What do you want to do? But that's where we're at. But this is the big one. I mean, this is a $600,000 hit to the association that we can't really control. Which is about $20 per person. Yes, sir. Yeah, on the 28,000 folks that live here. Yeah. yeah. So we're all ears. Gary. Well, I, th I think obviously you brought up some valid points. And by doing away with credit cards, you already know that you open up the can of worms to you have to take care of check processing. Or if you deal with cash, you have uh, the ability for cash to disappear. Um, checks, you have to go chase them down. You know, the simplest way is the obviously the plastic. Um, however, you know, there's an expense, as you said. But I, I guess I would rather look at bumping the golf fees up slightly somewhat to help cover that because I guess we'll pay for it or absorb it completely or also bump the merchandise up in the pro shops slightly to come that way. But I personally would probably be against doing away with a credit card because I think it's a mess for the employees to what ultimately will happen. Yeah, and to be clear, we wouldn't do away with credit card, but um, we would charge a processing fee if you used it. So it, and people would continue to use it, uh, but, but yeah, it, it's still a payment option for sure. Tom. A uh, couple points, one, Pre-COVID, when we were checking in at the pro shop, it always took anywhere from three to five minutes to get checked in. COVID really streamlined that whole process. One of, one of the few benefits out of COVID that I've seen. I mean, now it's just swipe your card, either swipe your credit card, take it out of member credit or out the door. Now, if you're gonna be sitting there taking handwritten checks or taking cash, you're gonna be slowing everything down in the pro shop on top of things. Uh, the added expenses into it, I think, are very high. One of your statements in here, I think, was the, the you, you really believe that the members are going to continue to use the credit cards even if they're paying the 3%. And I feel like it's probably not going to happen. I mean, personally, but I do it now anyway, but I use the credit card. I put most of my money on member credit, and I just check in, say member credit, they take it out. When I get low, I just, at the pro shop right there, I hand them my credit card and say, put another couple hundred dollars on my member credit yeah. and go that way. Well, now I'll do a, well, if you're gonna, I, I hear some rumors that we may be able to do a bank draft or a transfer 
or a Venmo to put money onto your member credit, but that will be the way that I would lean toward it to avoid the fee. Okay, so uh, yes, so um, you will have the ability to, uh, with a check, uh, add money to your member account. Unfortunately, we don't currently have the ability to add member credit through the portal, so it will have to be in the form of a check unless you ch unless you use it a credit card, and then and if this fee goes through, you would you would be charged a processing fee for that member uh, credit charge if you, if you put it through credit card. But uh, you would have to use a check to uh, with the proposed fee increase. You would have to use a check. Will that be available to do, to do at the pro shop, or now are we having to go to uh, member services? I, I believe so. Yes, I, I haven't. We have to iron out those details, but yes, we want to make it as convenient as possible for the golfers. But again, now we're processing checks right. at golf courses. Paying like somebody so, to do that. Yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of benefit to the credit card for the merchant. At the same it, time, it goes both. Three yes. percent's not a whole lot of money when you look at how much you, the reports you get and everything else, and your money right away. Good point. L. I have a question about the insurances. Uh, does this include work comp situations also? Yes. Okay, and do you think 15% is going to be enough on the health insurance? Well, you know, um, we're keeping an eye on that. So we're, we're watching. We're going to get some uh, – we have a meeting coming up with our uh, broker, Brown & Brown, to sit down and talk about what our claims experience has been – thus far since January. The good thing is, is when I look at claims experience, they actually take, I'm not sure how many months from the prior year. So right. we'll be able to get hopefully a wag on, you know, what that's looking like. So I, I think so right now, 15% is good. I hope it is, but um, hope is in not health strategy. for 42 years and we only hit 15%, I think once yep. in that time. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. Dennis. Uh, I'd like to weigh in on the uh, credit card fees. Um, I think um, members will feel like they're being nickel and dimed, and I think it should be absorbed. Um, there's other ways to generate revenue. Um, an additional complicating factor, because I, I disagree with your assumption that, that uh, people will continue to use the credit cards if they're advised they have to pay a fee. I think you'll see an abundance of cash, and that's something I don't want to see our pro shops have to handle from a number of standpoints. Um, I, I do have a lot of questions. I, 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 Harry pointed out that outside play was down $84,000. Yeah. Do we know why? Well, uh, part of it, it you, you really have to take the member guest play and the outside play and combine those two. So since we've... Uh, started collecting sales tax on outside play now, non-member um, non guest play. Uh, we're doing a better job of identifying those true outside golfers that aren't accompanied by member guests. So, so what you're saying is you don't know. Well, don't know what? If outside play is truly down 84000 It's it's not, Outside play, non-member play is not down 84000 to, an, to to answer your question. But I don't know what the mix is. Uh, I don't. That's a mix problem. It's not a a round problem. Round rounds are down a little bit, but not eighty four thousand worth. Because my concern is, I addressed it at the last meeting, and Harry brought it out today, is that when we are increasing outside uh, greens fees per round, um, based on what we need to make a budget, I think the the appropriate approach would be what would be the amount of greens fees to maximize revenue. Because if someone uh, sees an increase, they may only play two times a month instead of the three times they formerly played. And in that case, although we're getting more per round, our total revenue is decreasing. And I think there has to be some data to drive it, and not necessarily what other courses are charging, but how do we maximize our own revenue? And we have an excellent opportunity to generate that data um, when people call in to make reservations for rounds. We could just ask them a simple uh, few questions when they when they book their rounds about, you know, given the, the economic climate, uh, what would they feel is a fair increase in greens fees for the upcoming year, just to see what they'll say. 
Yeah. All right, Dennis, good questions. Um, just a couple comments. Uh, we've we've seen more card sales uh, from our residents playing, which means, and we've got data to back this up, that um, our residents are playing more golf. More residents are playing golf, which displace the public players. So the more our residents play, the less likely we will have outside or public play. So that's a double-edged sword on that type of situation. So um, uh, in meeting with uh, the budget team, one of my concerns was going up too, too much. And we started out talking about green fees over $70, and we came to a realization that 69, 68 sounds a lot better than 70. Get to that threshold, now you're into a different game. And yes, we have sales tax of 6.3% on true public players. That was weighed in and considered as well. Uh, cart fees, so yes, we're, we're inching up there, uh, but the competitive analysis that we shared a couple months ago shows that we're still on the bottom tier of this. My big concern is we've really, I uh, think, done a really good job of uh, having outside play continually increase. I don't want to lose that. But at the same time, if I had my druthers, I would rather have our residents play more golf than outside play, just because that's the sustaining uh, round count and revenue that we're looking for. Uh, our, our big push is let's get golfers in houses. If we get golfers in houses, we'll never have to worry about revenue and, and rounds because uh, if we can grow that 25, 26% of residents playing to 32, 33%, we won't be talking about things like this. So um, appreciate the, the point and I agree with you. I don't wanna price ourselves out of the game, but comparing to other places, and I'm not using Grand because Grand is a a skewed rate, uh, you've got festivals, skewed rate, uh, but there's other courses that are still considerably higher than us, and Todd puts out a great product, and as long as we can keep it uh, below or uh, very conservative, I think we're gonna continue to see success in, in public play. Pat, I understand what you're saying, but um, in the prior meetings, you say we are consistently at 26 to 27 percent of our population that plays every year. So that is not an increase unless those 26, 27 percent are playing more rounds. Right. I think what we're seeing is uh, the, the true golfer that are willing to buy a card are playing more rounds. So uh, 26, 27 percent are people that have played one unique round, uh, typical the community is about eight or ten percent, so a very active population. But um, I, I don't think we've gone past the tipping point of losing public players at this point to uh, price. Um, we're watching that. I'm watching that because it's just a big component. Twenty-six or twenty percent of our rounds played makes up twenty-six percent of our revenue and we don't want to lose that either. So, absolutely. Uh, I like the 68 green fee versus a 71, 72, and that 68 gets the job done, right? Yes. It's a consideration for sure, Dennis. It, it definitely is a consideration. I think 68's entirely too much. Um, that's just my opinion. But uh, on another matter, I noticed that the range keys prices were not going up and the ranges are constantly busy and there's a lot of people from outside coming here, so much so that members aren't uh, finding space available at times. And I think it would be prudent to perhaps increase the uh, key fees for outside personnel. Any other questions, Dennis? No. Okay, Patty? Just weighing in on the credit card fees. It's part of doing business. It's an operating expense. We eat the fees. That's why you're charging more for your golf fees. Fair point. Okay. Uh, I've got a couple comments. Is there somebody, anybody else want to speak before? Uh, just a thought is 
we were talking about raising the member's rate a dollar. Here's just a thought to throw out there. What if we said you're going to have a credit card fee, whether you use your credit card to buy member credit or you pay your credit card for your card or whatever, whatever. Uh, we don't do the dollar this year. We just say because we're going to take care of the members, the member's rate will not go up. Uh, just a thought in the budgeting process, but then you're, you're giving them something. You're, you got a fee coming on, but you're saying we're not going to raise your rates. That's just a thought that's there. Um, okay. You know, the, you said you were watching the rates, the things that, uh, like in January, we're down 1,471 rounds. I don't know what the December was. Uh, any idea, Pat, what February was? No, but uh, Todd puts out a report, and we see it every month, about uh, frost delay and uh, precipitation. And this year is significantly higher than last year in both of those areas, and I don't have it off the top of my head. But a large, just like yesterday, a, a large reason why we're losing some rounds is Wednesday, we're doing that Wednesday cycle yeah. where we're losing uh, 1,500 rounds every Wednesday. Well, the accountant in me says I have a hard time doing a budget when we see our numbers going this way and we're budgeting it going this way. At that. Yeah, so it, it, we'll, we'll, we'll adjust. I, I talked a little bit earlier about this. We'll, we'll definitely keep an eye on those rounds. We're still not budgeting what we did last year. But, however, to your point, we are falling behind to budget. And, and budget was at 320. So now, I'm still getting used to this. And I don't know about you as an accountant, Harry, but I'm not used to putting a budget together halfway through the year when you haven't even ha had your season where you made your hay yet. So we're, right. we're, we're in haymaking season right now. Let's see what happens in March and, and April, and we can adjust accordingly for sure. And one other thought, maybe, is we, you know, has anybody ever considered maybe having a different price now that you've got the system in place where we got the people that just walk in and play versus a guest of a member? I mean, definitely the guest of a member should have an increased rate, but should it be as much as somebody that just walks in off the street? The, is, is it a way to say, okay, hey, I can get you a better rate. Will members bring in more players? I don't know. It's, I think it might be something to consider. Yeah, so we do have the CMP card, right, Pat? The public player card, the public player card which will get you a discount if you play enough. Uh, and so there is a way to do that, but um, that would be something to, for a recommendation from this committee to come up to BNF and to, to the governing board. Um, and you bring up a good point there. That may be something that we can do if, if there's enough traction. Yeah. Pat? So, yeah, Harry, to address that, one of the things that we're asking, and, and uh, so far it's been pretty, pretty well received, is to, to give management, golf ops, um, the ability to do dynamic pricing during the peak season when needed so that, to your point, um, we could look at a T-sheet and say, hey, it's a little overcast. We just took off all the men's group on a Wednesday. Instead of asking for 61 plus 18, 79 in tax, why don't we give it to them for uh, 65 inclusive or 59 inclusive and push that out from a notification standpoint. So the dynamic pricing would be a component of this where we can be proactive on pricing and take advantage of the opportunities as they present themselves. And I think we can fill some additional spots uh, there. Well, and that, that's how we make our money is filling those spots. And I agree with that totally. And just my thought on the credit card fees is my awakening to it was when I went back to Bozeman last summer at every establishment I went in, when you paid with the credit card, there was a fee added. And yes, it was a shock when I bought my case of rye whiskey at the Rock and R bar, 
and there was a 4% add-on, but that's what they're doing out there and the people are getting used to it. it it's just what's happening. Bill? Thank you, I think. <laughs> There's a lot of numbers to play with and we've been doing that for a while. Um, so looking at our, looking at peak season, November, April, October through May, kind of what are we doing as far as resident rates? Um, we've had conversation about breaking out um, guests from outside play. We really don't have good data on that at the moment. Um, we've got, everything was merged because the rates were both the same for years that, so when the starters are checking people in, it was the same rate. We, um, now we are charging sales tax to the outside place. So now we've got a differential there that we can really depict how, what percentage of the outside play is really happening, uh, as opposed to member guests and, and residents. So that's all good. But you know, if we say 20% in the old days and split that out 10 and 10, not that much outside play, but it does generate member guests does generate a couple million dollars for us. Good stuff, but that's discretionary money. Back to what Dennis is saying, you start raising those rates up, they have other options to go play someplace else as to coming to play here. So we're sensitive about that. Um, but then you do the pricing of our neighbors and we see that we're still in the market or below. So I think we're good with kind of a, a pricing increase that we're kind of proposing with the, the 742 thing. Um, don't know, but it's, a, that's a gamble. Um, we did some quick analysis on, on our, our rates and they're posted on the, on the board there, but you can pick any number and help determine what an average you want to play with. But our peak season, October through May, the residents generate 157,000 rounds of golf. Add a dollar to that. That's $157,000 up your rates by seven bucks, that's a million dollars to us. So somewhere in between $7 and a dollar would help pay for a lot of things. Credit card fees, increase our, increase our revenue going back into the reserve study, enhancing a lot of the golf courses that we do and, and not having a subsidy. But again, that's on the backs of golfers. And we have 28,000 people living here that share, maybe they don't own golf. We think we got about 7,000 to 7,500 actual golfers here based on the swipes and the cards that are being used at our facilities. So a lot of people don't golf, but benefit immensely from having these wonderful pieces of turf around us, property values and everything else associated with that. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing. And no one really complains much about the subsidy of the library or the subsidy of swimming pools and those types of things, recreation centers that, you know, if you look at that, I mean, those are heavily, heavily subsidized and the golfers pay a lot, 10 million to play here. It's very cool. But you know, every time we turn around, right, we're, we're putting more on the golfers and that's, I feel it. Um, I golf, but I know a lot of people that do and I get cross-eyed looks all the time and that's okay. But um, at one point in time though, we, we really need to make a decision on fairness. And I get lectured all the time that there's no such thing inside the walls here. I get it. I hear it. But, you know, we have to go somewhere. But I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, this committee can make a recommendation formally to either the BNF committee or the governing board on what you really, really want to do. Um, like I said, you know, a $7 increase on a Kachina card, you know, I don't own one. But again, if whatever average you're at, I mean, that's close to a million dollars in revenue. I'm not saying go there, but I mean, we have options from zero to whatever you want to do. Um, but where are we going? And, and, you know, from a philosophical standpoint, what do you want to do? There's no real scientific, there's not a pill to take that can fix some of the problems that we're, that we're seeing from labor shortage to bank fees. It's, it's just, you know, how we get around doing it. It's a challenge. Thank you. Uh, any more questions from the committee? Dennis? Um, we received this um, schedule, which shows what the golf fees are going to be for the year. As I've mentioned, I, I'm all for dynamic pricing. And Pat, I would like you to reduce it to, to a plan 
as to how long, you know, before that day you will have, you know, decided to raise rates, you know, what you will do and just formalize it. Because as someone mentioned, if golf courses aren't being used, uh, that's money we're not getting. And it's very important that we generate rounds on our courses. Okay, I'll open it up for the comments out there. Here's. Just to address your point, are you talking dynamic pricing for the residents, or are you talking dynamic pricing for outside play? It would be for outside play. Only? That only. Okay. And then the, the bottom of that, we would never go below what a resident would play. That would be above that so that we're not... Um, taking advantage of that situation. Well, I think it's a great idea because, like, as you said yesterday, you know, myself and many of us canceled because of the rain, but you may have people that would have played, especially if the rate was cut way down, right? I mean, to each their own. So, yeah, I, I think it's a wonderful idea in that way. Also, one other small thing. <laughs> you mentioned the range keys. Are, are you telling me that non-residents can buy those range keys? We sell, we sell the range keys for $99 to the public. You get it for 90. for 90. So we would look at increasing that as well. How did we come up with 99, just out of curiosity? Yeah, we... Uh, <laughs> it's under 100. <laughs> I'll you, do a presentation on that. I think, it should be a, I think it should be a lot higher. Are, are you I, interested I think, in buying one? <laughs> I, no, but I think the, the non-residents using the range that they don't really pay for any other way should be considerably higher. In fact, I'm against it, quite honestly. Just give, sell them to them. That's just my point. Okay. Name and number. Gary Bosak, 102585. <clears throat> uh, I know most of you, and uh, in the spirit of full disclosure, um, I was on the golf committee for five years, so I very much appreciate your service and, and what you add to the community. The last three years, uh, I've been on the Budget and Finance Committee. I was asked to serve on that. And uh, important that you know I'm not here representing the Budget and Finance Committee. The only person authorized to speak for that group is the chairman, Dick Rhodes. So I'm here as a 22-year owner member, golfer, and uh, have a lot of experience, good to bad and the ugly. Uh, but some of the concerns I had uh, have already been addressed, but I, I just wanted to share some things with you. First, let me get you an experience with the credit card thing. We had uh, dinner at Briarwood Saturday night with some friends, and I got my check, and there was a $2.72 service charge on it. Now, I understand why Briarwood would be doing that, because they're <laughs> trying to replace 80 members that left, but uh, it is a way of, of the future, and it's just a thought. So the way I think about this is rounds, revenue, and risks. Uh, budgeting process starts with how many rounds you're going to do, What's the revenue as a result of that? And what risks are we putting at stake by doing those two things? And I think the rounds, uh, one of the reasons I'm here today is because I had a real heartburn over the projection of the number of rounds we're going to do. I know that Cliff is going to be flexible on that. I feel heartened about that. But there's some things that haven't been talked about that affect the rounds. For years and years, uh, in the 90s, we gravitated around 285, 287,000 rounds. We couldn't move off that number to save our lives. All of a sudden, COVID comes, we jump up to over 300,000. And then, of course, 326 and 333 the last two years. So I think there's something else that's driving that increased play. And it also is a risk because of what happened with the housing market. We sold over 3,000 houses the last two years in Sun City West. If Let's use a number that's better for the math calculation. Let's say that a third of the people in Sun City West play golf instead of the 27%. So the 600 houses that we didn't sell this year cost us 200 houses that were golfers. And if there were two golfers in that house, it was 300 golfers. Those 300 golfers, if they average 50 rounds a year, 15,000 rounds of golf that we lost because we didn't sell houses. So I think it was wind at our back when we were selling a lot of houses. We got a lot of people into the community who were more avid golfers, the people that Pat describes that play three or four or five times a week. Uh, and that, that's what drives the total number of golf rounds up, not the fact that we're going to have the person that plays one all of a sudden play two. So 75% of the people that golf in the community don't play 50 rounds a year. So there's a small group of people carrying that in the community. 
Another thing, we can talk about key season all we want, but we fill 88 to 92 percent of those tee times already. And so you're not going to get a tremendous amount of growth during that period of time. Yes, there is an opportunity for growth by dynamic pricing and some of the other things Pat's talked about, but there's a, there's a compression there. And if you drive more people, Pat can't take care of everybody because he doesn't have enough carts. So how often have you seen, especially in the afternoon, a golf course with all the carts out on the golf course, how many times have we turned to, I don't know if we have a number about that, but I'll, probably thousands of, of rounds of golf that we've lost because we don't have enough carts. Um, I, I, I was concerned about uh, slipping 77% of the rate increase to the outside play people. Uh, I take, take it back, non-member play. Um, outside play started in 2008 and we restricted it at the time to the 14 contingent age-restricted communities around Sun City West, and those are the only people that could play our golf courses. Two years later, we decided to open up to the whole communities around us, and as you've seen it grow, uh, I think the first year we had $40,000, and this past year it's $2.3 million between outside players and guests, and now we'll finally figure out what that difference is with the tax, so it's, it'll be good information to have. But we can't mess around with that. That's, that's really valuable revenue at a very, very high rate, and very profitable rate. So we can't do something that disenfranchises, disenfranchises those folks. There are other options. We get to be a $90 golf course, people will start to look elsewhere. And hopefully they haven't started that trend by the decrease in rounds that we've seen from outside play. But uh, you all will have a say over what those rates look like. And hopefully it puts things in perspective. We can meet the needs of the budget. We can also retain outside players and grow the game of the residents in the community as well. Uh, when you look at the levers that you have available to increase rates, what you're looking up there is just about all you're going to do. The rates for the basic cards haven't changed in four years. So the Kachina is 895, the Coyote is 325, and the annual has gone up from 3100 to 36, I think they're going to this year. Uh, but over the last four years, each of those has gone up an average about a dollar and a quarter a year. So there's not a lot of opportunity. Even if you took those rates up five dollars, that's eighty-five hundred dollars with seventeen hundred cardholders. So that's not going to make or break you. That's you can leave it flat and not impact any of the card sales. The more we grow card sales, the better we get because those people are now committed to play golf in Sun City West. So uh, mm -hmm. I totally support uh, the conversation surrounding that. But anyway, uh, enough time. I'm glad you didn't put the two minute up there. I would have wasted my yeah. <laughs> two minutes. But I appreciate your effort again, and thanks, and hope you give it a lot of consideration. But thank you. Thank you. Tim, any comments? <laughs> <laughs> Might as well get 100% participation. Hi, <laughs> uh, Tim Hurley, 120454. I think it comes down to this. I think everybody up here, or at least I hope you are, realize that we do have to raise revenue more than we did this year, right? The question is, how do we do it? There's two ways to do it. You can either get more money in or you can cut expenses, okay? Cutting expenses by passing on the credit card fee will eliminate right off the top about $200,000 of expenses that golf absorbs, okay? The other question that I have is, how many of you still write a check? For, for what? <laughs> yeah, for what? For I pay. I use credit cards for everything. Uh, the only, in fact, the only check I wrote last year was to the Deer Valley Men's Golf Club for my membership. So, I, I really think that people will make some noise about passing on credit cards fees, but. I really don't think the convenience that it offers people in their daily life is going to change their buying habits. So the question is, what do you do? Do you cut expenses or do you raise revenue? And that's up to you guys. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Any more comments from Cliff? No, sir. Do we have any more comments from the committee? I, I guess we should... Probably discuss what kind of a proposal do we want to bring back to budget and finance? Uh, what are your feelings as to what we need to do? So, but go ahead, Donna. 
Well, is it possible to pass the credit card fees on to outside play, but leave it not so for the member residents? Um, yeah, that, we could do that. Yes. If you if you figured twenty percent outside play, twenty percent of two hundred and fifty thousand, so it would be about fifty thousand in cost. So then we'd be looking at having to potentially make a dues increase on what they pay for playing golf to offset the $150,000 additional expense. So I guess we'll start with Patty. What would you like to see? Well, I still don't like the service charge fees for the credit cards being charged to the residents until we get, yes, it's gonna get there eventually, but let it happen a little bit. Let more of the restaurants start doing it. Let Amazon start, start doing it because the, they don't charge the credit card fees. Safeway doesn't charge us the credit card fees. Batches doesn't charge us the credit card fees. Well, like Amazon, you can bet that I guarantee you the credit card fee is built into their price. <laughs> then why don't we build that into our golf fees? Well, that's that would be the other alternative to it is that's what I said. The golf fees would have to go up, you know, a dollar to cover the credit card fees. Isn't that what we're proposing? So that's what you're proposing? Isn't that another what? dollar? Pardon? Yeah. Another dollar? Yeah, because sure. this is the cover. Because the budget has a two hundred thousand dollar decrease because of the budget has no credit card, you know, not paying the credit card fees. So it'd have to be another dollar, dollar and a half increase per round of golf to make up that difference. Dennis? I think there's two million reasons why we shouldn't increase or have the uh, uh, outside play players pay for the use of their credit card. I don't want to jeopardize that revenue. Um, and like I said before, I don't think it's a good idea to charge our member owners a fee for using a credit card at the golf courses. I just think they'll think they're being nickel and dimed. Um, and, and I think it's too early. We've had some really bad weather. So I don't know. I'd like to see what, what of course, March has been bad too. But I'd like to see the results of, of the March figures before we uh, settle on making a recommendation to the Budget and Finance Committee or the board. Al? If we're uh, under the impression that we're not paying credit card fees right now, we're wrong. Everyone has them, and they uh, have generally loaded it up on the front end, and we're, and we're paying them. Um, I can see this happening. Um, it's just a timing situation right now. Tom? I would be I would be more in favor of we currently have got a one dollar per member dues increase coming next year or per round increase coming next year. I would rather increase it to two dollars than to do the credit card fee. And I'm assuming it's gonna be close to break even. I, I, one thing I've asked, I'm assuming this fee is 3%, but I've never heard anybody officially say what it is. Yeah. Is it 3%? So if your average round is with card is $30, that's 90 cents. That we'd make it up that way instead of doing the credit card fee. Donna? I would agree with what Tom just had to say. I, I would rather see the rates increase than the credit card fee. Marilyn? I agree, because I, I don't like to do anything where they're adding something on. So, but if you have to increase our fees, do it that way instead of increasing a little bit and then still charging a little extra. It's, I, I wouldn't use my credit card. I would, I would do a check. Gary? I, I'm in the same camp. 
I'd rather bump the fee a little bit. So let me, what let, I'm let hearing, me add, let me add one. Okay. I, I think by by doing this, we could perceivably be increasing the revenue even more because not by continuing with the credit card without the fee, we'll make the check-in process as quick as it already is, make it easier on the pro shops, less number of charges. We are, obviously golf is the biggest number of swipes. I mean, the rec center dues once a year, uh, tickets, things like that, I don't think it could it materializes anyway. So I think in the long run for the community, we would be saving the rec center, the added expenses of people to handle checks, to handle cash, things like that. Just my thought. Any other comments? So what I'm hearing is that the committee is making a recommendation of not charging credit card fees and adding a dollar per round for member golf. Now my question would be, do in that, are we going to increase the round of golf for the outside play, or are we going to say the $7 is enough increase in the outside play at the present time? Comments? Out, outside fee is already having to pay sales tax. Yeah, so. yeah. So I would say it's not going to do not increase it a dollar to the to those. Is that the agreement? Okay, that will be the recommendation coming from us to budget and finance. And then I also think the what Pat wants to you know to come up with a deal where we can give Pat some, and all of a sudden he's got eight open tea times and there's a way to get to the people outside play if we can entice them in that we do it. Okay, any other? I think that's... Harry, can I get just a little clarification? Sure. No. <laughs> board recommend, excuse me, board recommendation moving forward is a $2 bump. And is that, um, as presented, is that during peak and transition season only? Yeah. Okay. Am I missing anything else? Is that the recommendation? Yeah? Okay. If it If it's only during peak and... Will that raise enough revenue? Because we're talking to be total be rounds. I would think yeah. it's, I would think the second dollar we're talking about should apply based on round. based on uh, the calculations that we've got going here as, as far as what we've presented. The one hundred fifty-seven thousand rounds is through peak season, and the credit card fees was like two thirty relative to that. Okay. So that was on the one fifty-seven is a one dollar bump. So that would get you to three hundred plus. That would cover the credit card fees easily on 157,000 rounds at, at two dollars a pop. No, we're we're already doing a dollar a pop. Not as far as next year. We've already decided that this is adding another dollar to it to cover credit card fees, and that would only get us 157,000. Correct. Not the 200. So we need to move that to the second dollar to go up for not a second dollar, but this dollar. To go up to go for, up for all, 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 all year round. Right. Yeah. Right. Got it. Okay. Are there any other comments? Uh, let's see. I think that's everything on the agenda, right? Yes. So, cop. Board comment or committee comments? Next meeting. Next meeting. April 13th. April 13th, 1 30 here. That's correct. And it's 304. 
and 304, we are adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>